All right, uh, let's let's do a soap challenge club soap. Um, so I'm wearing my new very cool sleeves. Uh, can you can see them? This is really awkward to do this way. Wow. Okay. Anyway, uh, these are from Farmers Defense. These are the uh, sleeves that were pre-order. Um, so if you got them, cool. If you didn't, I don't think we got any more. Um, and that's pretty exciting. Uh, we, he was the sponsor for the challenge I taught, which was Ruffles. Um, so that was really fun to do that. Um, so today I am going to make my version of the Cowboys and Aliens soap. I am choosing to do Cowboys for this first one. I might do an Alien one too. Um, I had this Appaloosa horse mold. Um, you can see it there in the mold already. Um, I got the mold from Lisa at I Dream in Soap, and I had this idea for an Appaloosa and had this dark mane, and it's just kind of been sitting on my shelf after I made it. I just haven't done anything with it. So this was a perfect opportunity to use it. So thank you, Soap Challenge Club, for yet again making me revisit projects that I probably should have done a while ago. Um, so we're going for a very Southwestern feeling. Um, we're going to do the horse... Uh, with some uh, buttes, is that how I say it? Butts, buttes, I don't know the word. It's those big, the big sandstone looking things behind them, like in Utah. Um, so these are our little um, sandstone colored hills there. And then the sunsets, we're gonna work up from the darker blue um, to our purples, pinks and yellows and oranges. So that's the plan. Um, and then on top, we're gonna have just some Southwesty looking embeds. Some of these are ones that I made just for this. Some of them are ones from other soaps that you may recognize if you've been a part of the channel for a hot second. Um, so this month is kind of fun because we don't have any uh, restrictions. <laughs> we don't have to do it a certain way, which I, I love because I'm chaos. Um, so I just decided to do something kind of fun and simple. Uh, this doesn't mean that you can't do something similar. Of course, we always encourage all of you in the club to make your own version of something. Uh, so if you want to do a horsey soap or you already saw the idea and we're like, oh my God, I'm doing a horsey soap. Don't feel like you can't do a horsey soap just because I did one. Um, that first solution I was pouring in that kind of looked like soup, it was my lye solution. It has raw silk, it's a melted in. Uh, and the... Uh, as well as some powdered sugar and sodium lactate. The second one was my goat milk. I have a whole bunch of goats, uh, hence the name, Cheeky Goat Savory. Uh, too many goats, lots of goats. We're not gonna talk about how many goats I have, but it's a lot. Um, so that is fresh milk that I milk and then either put right in the fridge uh, or in the freezer and then thaw to liquid state and then use. Now, when I'm designing a soap like this, I wanted the fragrance to kind of feel I don't know, westernish, cowgirl, boyish. Um, so that fragrance, the cedarwood and spice fragrance, definitely fit the bill. It's supposed to behave really well. I know that the Midwest leather fragrance um, can hurry a little bit, uh, but I wanted that leather undertone. Plus, again, I was trying to make up for that percentage um, percentage difference in it because you can only use so much. So I am not going to pour any of the fragrance into this just yet. I'm going to get my colors right. Um, and I'm hoping that the leather actually does help set it up a little bit. I wouldn't be mad about that. So we'll see how that works. We have just so many colors. All right, let's grab some pictures. So we have three for the Sand Mountain Dune areas. And then we have five, one, two, three, four, five, five for the sky. And I'm not going to need as much soap as I have uh, because there's a big old embed in there and that's going to take up quite a bit of space. Um, but I'm just going to color it all like I'm using all of it. I will pour the excess off into other molds. Um, that's kind of my jam. Um, if you are a careful soap maker, I love you. That's super cool. I'm not. I wish I was but that wouldn't be me. Um, I'm chaos, so nice to meet you. And I'm just pouring this batter over my spatula just to kind of help with bubbles. So when it hits the bottom and it comes back up again, you get that turbulence. Turbulence causes air trap. Air trap is the bubbles. Um, I'm gonna share this over. Uh, so that's the only reason I'm doing it this way. You don't have to do it this way. You can pour however is easiest for you. That's just why I do it, trying to get a smoother soap. Um, there's 
no right or wrong way, but I know I get questions about why do I do it that way. That's why. That's why. So I, I'm not sure because I haven't done any soapy math, but I was just saying I'm chaos. I'm not sure if I will need that much sand. So I might be giving more of the sky some of the soap because the sand is interesting, but it's gonna kind of be around the horse because I don't want the horse to get lost in those bright colors. And if I'm gonna be stuck with leftover soap, I think I'd rather have leftover soap that's I don't know, fun colored versus, you know, sand colored. Uh, so that's just how I'm thinking about it. We'll see if my thinking is correct. I'm also going to be adding some of these walnut shells and coffee grounds into the sand colors, uh, just because it, it helps with the effect. Do I want to get a little bit more out of there? I feel like I do. I feel like I do. It's not bad. Okay, let's get these guys first. Um, this is a blend of colors. When I make mix my colors, uh, I... So, uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, this is going to be news. If you're not new to the channel, sorry, you're going to hear it again. Um, I went to a art high school, uh, Dreyfus School of the Arts in South Florida. Uh, and I went for art. Art was the thing I was there for, visual arts. So I did a lot of color theory and it really helped me as an adult that does this as a hobby, um, a hobby business to have a good grasp of color and how I want colors to look. Uh, but if you don't have that, a lot of the color suppliers often have color wheels. Uh, there's ways to match colors and mix them. Um, but I know it can be frustrating when you're watching me with these really different colors that I didn't just get out of a bottle and like, how'd you do that? Well, I mixed it. Um, this is mostly Copper Penny from Nurture Soap. Um, and then it's scaled down or up with either browns or reds or oranges. Uh, this one also has some of that gold in it. And all three have uh, Nurture Soap's Eco Glitter Gold in it. Um, again, just to try to give it that kind of sparkly look uh, to it. So let's go ahead and pour these guys. Now, if you've, it, <laughs> this is going to be, I'm going to say this, this is going to sound so stupid when I say this, but I, I had to look at it. So I'm going to say it like maybe you did look at it. If you look at a sunset, like when you think of a sunset, I don't know about you, but my initial brain says that the lighter colors are at the bottom. And then the darker colors are at the top. And that is not how it actually looks when you look at it. Uh, the darker colors are usually at the bottom. Um, and like that's not everywhere. It depends on what point of the sunset. But like just in general, if you see the sky and it's pretty colored, a lot of times the darker sky is kind of creeping in on the bright spot um, towards the middle. So I try to incorporate that reality into my soap. Um, it's not always something that I succeed with, but it's something I have to consider because my brain wants to make it kind of like a little rainbow. And that's not really, that's not really how it looks, right? So let me split off a little of this. I missed one cup, but we can save that. How much of you is in here? There we are. Um, so, and I, I just, I noticed that I do that. Like I want to make it look the way I have it in my head, but that's not necessarily reality, um, which is rude, honestly. I wish reality looked the way I wanted it to. Um, I'd be a lot skinnier, just saying. Anyway, um, so that's something that you have to kind of consider when you're doing when you're doing a soap based on life, right? You have to kind of make it the way it really is versus what your brain says it is. All right, so now we've got all those mixed. That is just a punchy orange, holly. Bless, that is orange, orange, orange. Add some yellow in there, actually tone that down a little bit. Didn't want this to be too neon-y. Does that make it better? 
That dulls it down a little bit. Add in some of that purple. Okay. All of these are mixed. Let's add our fragrance and we'll add our mostly to these guys here. Okay, mix those in real quick. So that's just the crushed walnut shells. I get that from Brambleberry. Um, and then a little bit of coffee grounds, not a whole bunch. Coffee grounds can be super abrasive. Um, so I try not to use a lot of them unless I'm making a soap that is specifically to like scrub your feet. And I say, this is like your foot scrub soap. Uh, so that's kind of why you don't see a whole bunch of it in there. Um, I will be making another coffee and mint soap, uh, hopefully for the Halloween release. So um, we'll see. <laughs> My surgery has put me so far behind. It's not even funny, but we're going to try. All right, let's add our fragrance. See how you guys react. Because it said no rising, no acceleration with the cedar one. I worked with the leather one quite a bit. Yeah, that, that behaved pretty good. Um, but you just never know. Sometimes when you add fragrances together, when you mix them together, they'll do weird things together. Um, so I never want to just assume. All right. Cool. I'm going to tuck these over here for a second. I'm not going to add fragrance just yet because I know that that leather kind of speeds it up and I want to make this the way I want it. So I am going to fix my sleeve. Get another cup or another pouring pitcher here and I'm just gonna make a nice little almost like a wood grain pour in this um or do I want to just do it myself maybe let's let's try this maybe not make as many dishes with me I do tend to make a lot of dishes okay and pour it in the back now this because I've had it sitting on my soap shelf so long I'll just give that a shake I want to make sure that it's getting under the horse because I have a bad habit when I use these molds, like not making sure it gets totally under and they don't look right. So I think, I think that's right. And we'll add a kind of really bright gold in. Are you setting up a little bit? Yeah, you are. Okay, good. Because I want this to have those cool, like, I don't know, that Southwest feeling. Like they're, they're cool colors, right? What is that? That is like a big chunk of something. What are you? Oh, it's a big chunk of uh, walnut dust. Yeah, this is already nice and thick. Good, 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 good. That is exactly what I needed you to do. Good answer. This is why I didn't add it to the other stuff. See? Let's do this again. Try to get that all filled in. Do another layer of this lighter gold and then we'll maybe do a little in the pot swirly swirl for the other. Because I'm going to try to shape this a little bit. That's the plan at least. We'll see. We'll see if it works. I don't know if it will, but I'm going to try. I will say this smells fantastic. Um, it's a little, it's a little masculine. Um, I know I've got a lot of my female customers and clients that like that kind of boy smell. Uh, you will like this. It smells very good. Um, but the leather is just a nice undertone. I don't know. I like leather. Uh, it's, it's definitely a horse girl thing. Um, not like that kind. Like I, I don't think any of you are as uh, foul-minded as Mr. Cheeky is, but like I like leather, but not like that kind of leather. I like leather like I go into a tax store and it smells good. Not like any other iteration of whatever you're thinking. It's not that one. All right. Give that a little swirl. Tuck that in. Okay, let's see if we can. Oh, maybe over the, over the spatchy spatch. Will you also... You want the horse this way? The sunset? 
like that way. I feel like this way would be a more interesting look. So we'll do it that way. I'm just trying to make kind of an interesting little feature behind the horse. Um, and like, again, like I could, like there's, there's really good makers who like make these scrapers and they do these like super detailed scenes. And like, I admire them so much. I am not that cool. That is not my jam. I don't like any part of that. Uh, so if I'm gonna create something it's gonna be kind of like this. It's gonna be kind of haphazard. It's gonna be a little, you know, weird, funky. Not quite on purpose, but sort of on purpose. Um, and that's just my style. You know, I, I sometimes joke that I wish I was like that, but I, I kind of like just being a little free loving artist that makes interesting little weird things that aren't super crazy thought out. There's a beauty in chaos and I embrace that. All right. Just kind of trying to flatten off the top of our little butte here, butte, but somebody tell me how to say that word, please. It's definitely one of those words that like I've seen it, I've read it more than I've actually heard it being said because I don't live in the Southwest. I live in Florida and we don't have that. Here. They, they don't we don't we don't have that here all right so that's setting up let's wipe this off and add our fragrance to our other colors and pour a nice little one pot wonder baby sunset there and call it a day we'll decorate our top and on to the next soap because I have so much soap to make that I wanted to at least enjoy my nice sleeves and uh my attempt this month. All right. How do I wanna, I guess we'll go the dark. Dark to light. And I need a pouring pitcher. Donde esta? Not you. Also not you. Does anyone else have a favorite pitcher or is it just me? Cause I definitely have one that I like. Oh, it's dirty. It's annoying. All right, I'll use one of these. My mid-size one is dirty. That's illegal. Here we are. All right, so let's add a little bit of the, this to the blue. Get you mixed in. I love this blue. Uh, everyone always asks me what the color is. I This is one of the few things I don't share. Um, it's a color that I developed and I've shared it with like two people. Um, and they also enjoy it. One of those people is Roxanne. Um, and then Sharon from Willow Bella, she has it too. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> I'm real funny about it. Um, and I, I feel a little selfish being so funny about it, but it's, it's one of those things where like, it took me a long time to develop that color, make it stable. And I don't know, I just, I, I'm protective over it. Uh, does this make me a child? Yes. Do I know this? Yes. Do I care? Not really. Not really. Okay. Um, so if you ask me, that's why I don't share that. I, I, I keep that secret. That one's mine. Um, and it's not because I don't love all of you. It's because that, you know, this is, well, it's a hobby business. Um, it does not actually feed my family. It feeds the goats. And I take that seriously. So, all right, so we gotta pour this in order of reverse. So we're gonna put that yellow in first. Not all of it, but a good amount of it. And then we're gonna put in our orange. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah, you can. Again, I'm moving kind of quickly because I know this is gonna wanna set up on me. And we're gonna put in our pink. Again, not all of it are purple. 
which is getting a little ricey on me. You can see it there. And our dark blue, which I'm going to stir before I put it in there. Apparently flick all over my studio. God bless. Okay. And again, not quite all of it, but a good chunk of it. You over here. How much that already set up. That's fantastic. It's exactly what I wanted. All right, let's get you in the mold. Quickly, quickly, quickly. off to the side for one second if that piece of there it is i'll be right back i'm gonna pour this off in a mold real quick i'll be right back 